Hello, good evening Evertonians and welcome to Goodison Park. This is Everton Live and I'm Sarah Halpin. I am delighted to be back here at Goodison Park under the lights ahead of this tasty fixture, Premier League tonight versus Burnley. Um, we've got what look what's coming up for you tonight on Everton Live. We haven't got the monitor at the moment, but I think my memory is good enough just about to remember. We've got player interviews coming up for you. We will have the team news for you as it comes in before anywhere else. We will have a chat with Scott McClough about what has been going on with the Blue Family campaign over lockdown and how important it is to have Everton fans back in the stadium as well. But to kick us all off today, I'm delighted to have my partner in crime back with me. Here's Snods, here's his VT. Snowden, delighted to have you back. I've missed you. Have you missed me? I've missed you. Thank I you really very have. much. Thank you very How much. How happy are you to be back here at Goodison Park? Ah, it's fantastic. I've been here obviously during COVID times and there've been difficult times, but to have the uh, fans in for the home game against Southampton was incredible. The noise the the fans generated that afternoon was was fantastic. I'm sure it's sold out again tonight. Um, I'm expecting a victory, but I don't want to make a prediction because <laughs> last season I made a prediction and Burnley turned us over. So I don't want to I don't want to forecast the score, but I'm hoping I'm more than hoping for three points this evening. Well you just alluded to it there, Snods, as well. You know, our home form last season, our home record last season was poor, wasn't it? There's no there's no two ways about it. We struggled at home. And it's, there's gotta be a lot to do with that with for not having fans in the stadium. Absolutely, totally right, because when you come out here at Goodison to Z Cars, I've always said it, it's so intimidating for the opposition, but it gives the players a massive boost. It does make you numb coming out to it, especially now they've put the sirens on oh, to the it siren. as well. They're quite fantastic. So, uh, yeah, last season was so disappointing at Goodison Park as a away form was fantastic. We couldn't argue with that, but you're supposed to make your home ground a fortress and then go away and nip and try and nick three points away and then you progress in the league so yeah we, we've started well first game of the season and with a win I want to see a win this evening as well yeah definitely and we have made a really really strong start to the season of course with two wins and then a point away at Leeds which is no easy place to go as well just you know how how frustrating is it if frustrating at all international breaks do you think that they're an inconvenience when you're in such strong form as Everton have been they are from a club aspect uh, as a player that's the pinnacle you want to play for your uh, you want to play for your country everybody wants to play for the country but when you play for Everton Football Club you also uh, want to keep the momentum going as well and you're right we've started ever so well form's been good uh, and yeah it is a little bit of a dis distraction and I know not many Evertonian or England fans anyway <laughs> so as long as as long as our players come back free of injury that's all they care about to be quite honest and uh, Hopefully we'll uh, we'll see a strong performance, strong team out tonight. Whether we see Rondon will be interesting. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm intrigued actually to see whether we see Rondon come mm. in. Of course, reuniting with Rafa Benitez. I just want to get your thoughts on the manager as well. Obviously, a controversial one coming in, but he's done ever so well, and I think changing the opinions of, of maybe people who had a few question marks over him. Yeah, it has. Um, it was a difficult one for Evertonians to take, a former Liverpool manager, but I think. What we've seen of uh, Rafa Benitez so far, I think tactically he's very astute. Uh, he's always encouraging on the sidelines, right from the first to the last minute. And um, he's got he's got certain things right in the first three games. So while he, while he's Everton manager, we have got to back Rafa Benitez. He's uh, we support Everton Football Club. We love Everton Football Club. Rafa's in charge of our club, so we've got to get behind him. If we want to be successful, got to win trophies, then we've got to get behind this guy. Well, I liked what he said in his most recent press conference, actually, because one of the journalists asked him, you know, whether he still saw himself here in 10 years. I believe it's Sean Dice, you know, long serving mm. at Burnley manager. And he said, well, yeah, I'd love to be here in 10 years because that would mean that I'd done things well. They mean the fans are happy, the club's happy, that I'd brought success for the club. 
do you see Rafa as somebody that would be here for the long haul as well and take us ultimately you know, to the new stadium and beyond? There's only one answer to that. Can we be successful? Can we win trophies? Can we finish in the top four? Can we finish in top six in Europe, etc.? Um, results will, will prove that, whether it's in one year, three years, five years. Um, I would love to see a manager be given a long time here. We've gone through too many managers in my eyes in the, in the last few years. That's not like Everton Football Club, but it proves that we're not getting results right on the field. That's why certain managers have, have, have left. But if we get if we get the results we want, if we, we can win a, win a trophy in the next year or two, if we can fight for the top six on a regular basis, then he, you're right. Rafa's doing something right, so why get rid of him? I'm sure he wants to stay. Um, and if we're successful, I'm sure the fans will want him to stay. Yeah, definitely. Well, we've seen the players that Rafa's brought in as well have done exceptionally mm. well. Andros Townsend, Damari Gray, Solomon Rondon as well, as you said, has, has joined us from first uh, Venezuelan player to play for the club, which is brilliant. And, and Begovic as well. I think we can see some of the, the players arriving now at Goodison Park ahead of this one. Uh, but just on those players that have come in as well, Snods, what do you make of them? You know, we've, we've seen... From my personal opinion, anyway, it seems like they're players that very much want to be here, that buy into the ethos of this club, know what fans want, know what this club expects, and they seem keen to do that. Yeah, they do. I think I think Rafa's looked at the market. I think uh, Marcel Brands has looked at the market. Can we afford certain players with the Fair Play League and stuff like that? And I think Andros Townsend is he, a great squad player. I'm sure he'll play a lot of games, start a lot of games, and come on as sub in a lot of games. Damari Gray has been absolutely at outstanding uh, 1.5 million that that could turn out to be a, one of the bargains of the season to be quite honest because I think the fans have took to him uh, already scored a couple of goals he's exciting Begovic is going to uh, provide go, uh, Jordan with uh, some stiff competition and now Rondon if Rondon's the player that left to go out to China obviously didn't see anything of the last two seasons when he were in China but I know from his times playing here uh, against us for Newcastle and West Brom, etc. Then he's an handful. He's an handful. He is, and I like what he's had to say um, in everything that we've heard from him so far in, in terms of interviews and stuff. He seems like somebody that the fans will really take to. We've just seen on the screen there as well Tom Davis, I believe he should be back uh, fit and available. Ben Godfrey, we've seen there as well, which is a massive plus. Mm. How excited will fans be to see, to see the players such yeah, as themselves I back in the squad? See, that international break gives you a little bit of time as well to get your injuries back. Um, ben Godfrey, for me, was outstanding since his arrival at Norwich. I think he's our main centre-half now, I really do. So I think it's, if we do play five at the back, it's any two with Godfrey. Or if we play the four, it's any one with Godfrey, in my eyes. Um, so, but it's great that we've got competition for places all over the pitch. We've got several midfield players that are battling for probably two or three positions, which is great. And now we've got Rondon, Calvert-Lewin, Richarlison. We have mentioned Damas Rodriguez. I know, of course. As well. So he's still, he's still here at the club. He, yeah. he'll, he'll want to prove a point to Rafa that he is worthy of, of playing. We know what a fantastic player he is. Uh, but I think the way that Rafa wants to set his team up, he wants a bit more work ethics, a bit more. So uh, Rodriguez might have to have to fight for his place. But we know when he's on that pitch and when he's on the ball, there's nobody better in the Premier League in my eyes. Well, that's it, isn't it? It's those moments of magic that James Rodriguez can, can bring. And there was obviously a lot of talk about his move potentially to to differently go to Turkey. It didn't happen. Mm. He is still an Everton player. Um, we know that financial fair play has, has sort of held us back a little bit in this market. But the fact that Hammers is still an Everton player, it's got to excite fans, hasn't it? The chance that they, these lot here could see him playing in that Royal Blue on this pitch. Absolutely, of course. He's got nothing to prove to in world football. He's proved it. But I'm sure he still wants to be a success here at Everton Football Club. I know Carlo Ancelotti brought him to the club, but... I, I've seen him at Finch Farm, and I've seen and I've seen clips uh, on Everton TV that, and he seems great. The other players, and he mixes in. He look, he seems to like it here. Yeah. Uh, there's no question about it. He's when he's on that ball, he just sees things that other players don't see. He scores goals that probably nobody else can score as well. So he's still got something to offer this football club.
Absolutely, I believe the same. Um, Shame as Coleman as well. Mm. I think he may be fit for tonight, obviously getting a little injury whilst on international duty. That was concerning, he's very important, especially we, we're all very well aware of the situation with right back. We are a little bit sparse in that position. We wanted to bring one in, didn't manage to do that. Uh, do you want to see Seamus Coleman in the side tonight? I do, but I think it's a little bit unfair as well on John Joe Kenny. Yeah. Um, because John Joe gives you everything. He, he, he's a scouser, he just... He loves this football club, uh, he loves a tattle. Yes. He's, uh, so for me, John Joe Kenny's a, a good understudy or a good replacement for Seamus now and again. I'm not saying he's the, he's the, he's the answer to that position long term. Uh, because I'm sure John Joe wants to play regular first-team football, whether it's at Everton Football Club or somewhere else. But I know he's focused, he's determined. But in my eyes, Seamus Coleman still, he always has been and he still is probably our best right-back. And I, I love watching him. He's a determined captain of our football club and he doesn't like getting beat. And he gives you that energy on the pitch and he, and he, he drives our lads forward and he lets them know as well if he's not happy. I like that in a player. Definitely, definitely. He's a bit of you, that, isn't he? He is a bit of me, yeah. <laughs> but hopefully, you know, he will be fit and uh, available for contention anyway. Seamus is someone who'll thrive in this. And in front of the fans, mm. under the lights again, he loves that, doesn't he? Do you know what? There's nothing better playing, in fr playing under the lights. You, you play at three o'clock. Well, do they play at three o'clock now on a Saturday? Not very often. But night games here are special. They always have been. And uh, it, used to be, it used to be great coming out to the row, the floodlights on and... Uh, yeah, when and if and if the boys put a performance up, like I'm hoping they do from the first minute, this crowd get behind them and make it really difficult this evening for Burnley. They're, they're a strong outfit; they'll put themselves about and uh, they'll cause us problems. But we've just got to match them, be as determined as them, and then hopefully we've got players to win a football game here tonight. We ability-wise, we're better than Burnley, yeah. but. We've got to match them. We've got to match them. We have. They're going to be a very tough, tough team to break down. There's no doubt about that. Team news is just around the corner now for you, so we will soon be able to dissect and have a look at that team and the eleven that are going to be facing the Clarets tonight. Uh, but just on Burnley as well, we know that they are a very solid team. They know what their plan is. They're very well organised. Sean Dyche is a fantastic manager. Then they're going to be tough to break down. But do you see those those players? Potentially, like your Richarlison, your Dominic Calvert Lewin, your Decorays, we've, we've, we've got more class in this side that we should win. Yeah, I think we have, but I think they're back four are really well organised, they're solid. Uh, the left back gets forward on numerous occasions with McNeil yeah. if he's playing over that side. Two centre backs um, are really solid. They, there's no airs and graces about them, they tackle it, they tackle the ball, they go and win the headers. When it needs to be cleared into the stand, they clear it into the stand. They all know the jobs at Burnley. Yeah. Uh, and they, they'll say they're not the most gifted team, but they don't make it easy for anyone. Uh, and they've got Chris, Woods up, Chris Wood up front as well. Danger who, men up top, haven't they, that can cause us some real problems? Yeah, they know, whoever plays centre-back this evening, they know that they're in for, a, in for a battle for 90 minutes. It will not be easy, but as you said, and, I, and I've said it earlier, I think we've got a better players in our team but better players don't win games determination and the will to win win football games and then the, the ability overcomes that and I think uh, I think that's going to happen tonight I hope so because you know we have made such a strong start to the season I think we're in sixth position at the moment a win would take us right up to I've the heard, top I've heard 5-0 I was just going to say to you 5-0 takes us to the top 5-0 top of the league eh? so <laughs> come on boys come on boys <laughs> Rondon Hattrick will do on I, his day. I don't sit back if we 4 0 up, let's go for the fifth. <laughs> let's go for the fifth, let's take us to the top. No, but it is, it's a fantastic position that Everton find ourselves in, isn't it? And, mm. you know, the fans being back, I mentioned it earlier, how important the fans are for these home games. Our home form last season was, was pretty, pretty poor. Um, these games tonight, Burnley at home, we could be the edge this 12th man. Do you know what, sir? Me and Graham Stewart pulled up this evening at six o'clock and we went, wow, how, many, how many fans are here already? Two hours before kickoff, which yeah. is which is fantastic. We pulled into the car park, and there was loads of cars already. And we were using one of the first or first ten cars in the car park, yeah. and it was packed. And I'm thinking, what time? Do, even Graham Stewart went, "Do we kick off at seven tonight?" So uh, yeah, you can tell there's a buzz about the place. The fans are wanting to get back in as well, so uh, they're as excited as we are. They are. We're just as excited, absolutely. Well, we have got the two team news in for you guys. 
and this is it. So in goal, we've got Jordan Pickford at the back. We've got Michael Keane. We've got Alan in the squad in that midfield. Richarlison, Damari Gray, who's made a fantastic start to the season so far. And we're looking to continue that tonight, no doubt about that. Luca Dean is in there. Yeri Mina at the back. Andros Townsend, another one who's made a really strong start to the season for Everton. The call cool rate, Ben Godfrey, there he is. And Seamus Coleman as well. So that is fantastic. Two of the players that we weren't sure would be available. It's brilliant to see them in the starting 11. On the bench, then we have Begovic, John Joe Kenny, of course, who we touched on there, Mason Holgate, Alex Awobi, Andre Gomez, Anthony Gordon. Brilliant to see him there as well. Jean Philippe Gauban, Gauban what, a, what a great name to see there in the team sheet. We know that he has had troubles over the last few years. It'd be great to see him maybe come on the pitch at some point tonight. Tom Davis, and there he is as well. Salomon Rondon. So that is your Everton team and substitutes for tonight's game. And here's a look at Burnley as well. So we've got Nick Pope, Matthew Lowton, Charlie Taylor, James Tarkowski, Ben Mee, John Berg, good, I can never say this one, good month, good, <laughs> good month, month yeah. if you doubt me, Josh Brownhill, Chris Wood, Ashley Barnes, Dwight McNeil, somebody that potentially could have, could have been playing for the opposite side tonight, but he is in Burnley colours, colours sorry, and Ashley Westwood. The bench for Burnley today is Hennessy Cork. Aaron Lennon, brilliant to see him make a return to Goodison Park as well. Always somebody very well loved here by the fans. Jay Rodriguez, so not our Rodriguez tonight. Maxwell Cornett, Eric Peters, Phil Bardsley. We've got Vidra and Bobby Thomas as well. So those are your two teams. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have a look at dissecting that then now, Snods. To start with Everton, of course. Mm. Delighted to see Seamus Coleman in there and Ben Godfrey as well making his return to Everton. Yeah, it definitely looks like three centre backs mm -hmm. um, Keane, Mina, and uh, Ben Godfrey, two wing backs as well. So, uh, yeah, Rafa's gone, gone for that. Yeah. Is, he, is he slightly worried about aerial threat? Uh, that's why he's put Keane and, and Mina in. Anything pace wise, Ben Godfrey will just eat him. He's <laughs> yes. a machine, the boy. There's no, there's no question about that. As John so, Joe Kenny said, he catches pigeons, yeah, lad. <laughs> I, I, I have no, no worries about them getting him behind tonight and uh, beating him for pace. And as I said, that's, I think that's why Michael Keane and, and Mina are going to uh, compete in the air against him. So, um, yeah, tough test, but they're up for it. Definitely. And Abdullah Decore and Alan as well. Do you know what? I'm, Decore, sorry, um, since Rafa came in, he, he, he stated to him that he wanted him to score more goals. And during the first three games that we've already played, I have seen him advance so many times into the penalty box. His energy levels have been unbelievable. Um, not only defending at set plays and, and on the edge of our box, but he's also getting forward and getting into the box. And that's what Rafa wants. He's told him he wants probably seven or eight goals this season. Um, and there's no reason why he can't do it because he's got the energy to get about the pitch I, I know it's an engine isn't he oh. absolutely unbelievable any, any midfield player Sarah from the opposition would not want to play against people like that because he, he just never stops and uh, when you've got somebody like that you're thinking oh no here he goes again and you've got to make runs to mark him and so uh, yeah he's a big plus this season so far if he can keep that going Definitely. And somebody else I can see thriving tonight under these lights, a player that always plays up for the crowd, Richarlison. Delighted to have him. Obviously, there's been a bit of a bit of goings on with, with Brazil, the Football Federation, etc. Yeah. But we're in the good books with them. Richie's here. Do you see him shining tonight? Do you know what? All I want to see him do is smile. Yeah. <laughs> smile, please, Richie, for me. Even if he's, if he's... I want to see him get an hat trick, but will he smile for us? I hope so. Uh, but no, he's, he's another one you would not like to play. And, and the more he gets upset, the more determined he gets. So I want to see him get kicked a little bit in the first five or ten minutes, <laughs> and then he'll be he'll be he'll well be angry. Up, he will be he'll be well up for it, and he's uh, he's a nuisance he when is. he when he's like that when he's in that mood he's a nuisance he's an angry he's an angry man, <laughs> and uh, that's how I want to see him tonight. But I also want to see him with a smile on his face when he scores a goal as well. Absolutely, I love that. And someone else that I think could be a real handful, our latest signing, Salomon Rondon, and here he is in his first week of training with the Blues. Yeah, you're going to
Yeah, so good stuff from what we've seen there from our later signing. And what do you expect from Rondon? I know we spoke about him a little bit earlier, but he seems to really have the right attitude and something that these fans are going to love, doesn't he? Well, that's what Rafa's said about him. He said he's a determined player, gives his all, and that's what he said as well. He said it's great to be at a club like Everton under a manager that he respects. Uh, so I, I don't think we're getting anything different, hopefully, than what I've seen him play in the Premier League before. And when, when I've watched him against us, I've always said that he's an handful. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't mind him on our team, and we've got him. I know he's two years older than when he were at Newcastle, so he spent a couple of years out in China, but he's a solid player, he holds the ball up, he gets good assists, and he scores goals as well himself. So uh, Rafa, I'm sure Rafa will get the best out of him. The respect for each other, it seems mutual. So when you've got a manager like that, you want to go out and prove that his decision's right in bringing to this football club. And he's, uh, he's a good, a great acquisition for me. Definitely. And no Dominic Calvert-Lewin, of course, tonight. We'll hopefully have more on that for you when it comes through. But do you think that could give him an opportunity tonight to potentially make his debut and come on and, and lead the line for I him? definitely think he will come on at some point of the game. Uh, I don't know what his fitness is like. I don't think he's played a... Uh, a league game out in out in China since May, I think I, I read. So he'll not be at that level yet to uh, obviously start a game or probably come on after 45 minutes. He'll probably will see the last 10, 15 minutes, hopefully, of him, but see some part of him. But to be honest, I'm not really worried if I don't see him tonight because hopefully things will be going that well. We could be two or three up. And, uh, five. and mean to, yeah, <laughs> five. <laughs> and, and Rafa might not want to change it, or with that many up, that he could just bring him on. But let's not get carried away. Let's not get we carried away. We know this is going to be a difficult game, Absolutely. and we always seem to shoot ourselves in the foot by saying <laughs> we will get three points. So let's not. Uh, Let's not, let's not go overboard, no, but we are very much no. looking forward to it. But we have had an interview earlier in the programme with Scott McLeod. I spoke to him earlier on. He's our head of engagement and communications. And here's what he had to say ahead of this one. So Scott, thank you so much for joining me. Scott McLeod, head of engagement and communications, of course. Now, Scott, we saw fans return for the first Premier League fixture against Southampton. Firstly, how much of a difference did they make to the team that day? Well, I think it's been well documented how much they were missed last season. The, the players, the manager, everybody associated with the club 
missed the fans last year and I think the the impact they had against Southampton was obvious. I mean, the, the, the changes the manager made at half-time made a big difference, but the, the fans dragged the team over the line and that second-half performance coming back from a goal down for the first time, first time since 2015, I don't think it's any coincidence that it was the first game back with the fans. Absolutely, and of course, you know, when Abdoulaye Decore scored in that Gladys Street end, the celebration said it all, didn't they? From the players, from the fans, that was us back together and how, how emotional a moment that was. Yeah, and as it was great to be back together in the stadium. I mean, it's been really important for us over the last 18, 19 months that we've stayed together as an Everton family through the pandemic, through the lockdown, through people being at home. It's been really important for us to maintain that relationship. And I think it was demonstrated at the game of Southampton what we've all been craving to be back together because we've been sort of seeking social media, we've been seeking websites, we've been seeking any means of having that Everton connection um, and it was it was great for it to uh, sort of culminate with everybody being back for the last game. Absolutely, and you alluded to there, you know, the pandemic and how important it was to stay engaged with the fans and make sure that everybody was okay and being looked after. Which brings me to the Blue Family campaign, which was a, a massive success, um, and you reached out to so many people, not only here in the local area but further abroad as well. Um, how important was that project, just to keep everybody, you know, in good spirits and make sure that everybody was being looked after as well? Yeah, it's been vitally important. I mean, when we launched the Blue Family Initiative in March last year. We, nobody knew it was going to sort of be the, the journey that it's been and been the length of, of, of challenge that it's, that it's been for the last 18, 19 months and ongoing. But what was really pleasing with the Blue Family campaign is that because of the way in which the, the club operates, the charity operates, uh, we were well positioned to launch the campaign immediately, even before the country went into its first lockdown. We identified the need within our community, amongst our fans and within the wider community and we felt it was important to maintain that connection and, and really provide um, sort of a, a link to those people who are in isolation. At, at the time, we didn't know it was going to be weeks or months. As it turns out, it's been 18 months and counting, and the Blue Family Initiative is still ticking along, still, still making difference every day to people. We make, we've, we've, we've impacted tens of thousands of people, provided them with a link to the club and with... with help and assistance when they needed it most and that's all because of the way that sort of the club and the and the charity were positioned at the outset we, I don't think any other club could have launched, launched a campaign like that so quickly with so much impact well the, you know our club and our charity is really a, a credit to this area as well and that the work we do in the local community and as you said there I think you know full well Scott how important football is and how important Everton is to the the local communities around here and the fear I think when people realized they of course they couldn't get to events they couldn't get to the match um, um, that really unsettled a lot of people, how they were going to maintain that sort of communication and co connect, really, with the club. And we've seen that, and it's, we're still seeing that now. It's been fantastic, hasn't it? It has, and I think it sort of beyond the actual enjoyment of going to the game, your relationship with a football club is 365 days of the year. It's, it's, for your, it's a lifetime relationship. And sort of, obviously, you, you have that release on a match day of, you know, of, of hopefully joy, elation, sometimes disappointment, but we're, we're always together and in it together. And when people were being isolated and having to stay at home and they weren't able to have that contact with their friends and family on a match day, um, having the football club in a position to be able to deliver means of engagement through emails, through social media, through video messages, through phone calls from players, um, the, the way the, the club was able to galvanise and come together to maintain that link and maintain those relationships, um, it's just a testament to, you know, so we, we are the people's club, I think we've demonstrated it in the last 18 months, but the, the, the importance of the club to the people has been also very evident in the last 18 months, and I think it's genuinely the case, certainly with the EITC, that we've saved lives in the last 18 months. 100% evident in the community, absolutely incredible charity, and they're very, very fortunate to have them involved with this football club. We mentioned, of course, as well, fans further apart from L4. Um, we've got a lot of fans, growing fan base worldwide now, thanks to a lot of the players that we're bringing in as well. You know, we're, we're growing all the time. What have we been doing to communicate with fans overseas and keep, keep them well engaged as well? We've done an awful lot in the last 18 months, and to a certain extent, the sort of the, the restrictions of the pandemic have actually afforded us an, opportun an opportunity. So everybody was at home across the world 
everybody was having to turn to, to digital means of communication and that was really liberating from our perspective so for instance last year we were able to do a, a live watch along if from, from Bogota for everybody so for the for the derby and we've we've done so many sort of digital engagement events so we've done support club visits that have from from San Diego and Seattle all the way over to to Norway and in the in Singapore and the far east the, there have been no borders to our fan engagement and we've, we've sort of um, extended that with the, the launch of new so social media platforms in South America in uh, Spanish and Portuguese language. We've expanded our activity in North America. We've really taken the, the Everton ethos and it's very important to us that it's an authentic fan relationship. So the way in which we engage with people on county roads just outside the ground, we try to extend that to people in North and South America and um, it's, it's really paying dividends because what we're finding is that those new fans that we're, find, uh, that, that we're sort of making connections with understand who we are as a club and are buying into Everton because of who we are as a football club as much as how we perform on, on the pitch and hopefully when the two things come together we'll be, we'll be flying very high. I love that and of course with Everton Live as well we, you know, we're very lucky to have people watching all over the world and bringing them right here to Goodison Park and building them up to the action and Goodison Park you know we're all it's mixed emotions isn't it we know it's no secret we're not going to be here for too much longer now but we have got Bramley Mordock Stadium to look forward to the groundbreaking stadium is just going to be incredible i think we've all ecstatic now that it's got moving and it's, it's officially underway which a lot of people were waiting for um just if you can let our fans know scott how we can follow and keep up to date with bramley moore dock and the project yeah well it's really exciting anybody who um, who is in the city or uh, traveling into the city on a daily basis will start will have seen what's happening down at bramley moore dock we'll be launching a website in the next few weeks which will afford people an opportunity to see a webcam and a time-lapse video of of how the site is changing, we're filling in the dock, we're knocking down uh, buildings at the moment, we're getting everything ready for the sort of actually being able to start building a stadium on that site. Uh, we're going to be launching a podcast series where there'll be daily updates from the team who are on site with really sort of unbelievable levels of insight into some of the, the, the things that you'd not even thought of around what, what they've needed to do to make that dock sort of um, capable to be built upon. So at the moment there's, there's divers in there sort of doing, doing recce's of the, of, of the dock just to make sure everything's as it needs to be and there's some really interesting stories that will be in the podcast series coming up. And we just encourage people to go to the, to the new website and to the, the current website to just keep updated with them. Um, sort of the exciting progress we're going to see made there over the next three years and it's, it's really sad that we're going to be leaving this place um, but we've got we've got so many match days left and we've got to savour every single one and we'll we'll make sure that we, we do right by Goodison with a Goodison legacy project but when we move to Bramley Moor Dock it's going to be something else. Oh it really is so well, we've got a few games left here at Goodison Park thankfully to, to, to savour and enjoy under the lights tonight you must be looking forward to this one. Yeah, it's uh, it's my first night match for well, 18, 19 months. It's going to be very strange with all of the, the fans in, in in situ and Goodison at night. It's um, it, it's I mean it's special all it's special all the time. But night matches just have that extra little bit of flavour. When the siren plays tonight, it's um, I, I think it's going to be bouncing. Goosebumps. Well, Scott, thank you so much for everything you've done throughout the past 18 months and beyond. And let's hope for three points tonight under the lights. Okay, great. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Big thanks to Scott McLeod there for joining me all earlier to talk about everything that Everton have been doing uh, through the Blue Campaign, through the pandemic, and of course, Bramley Moor Dock as well, which is on the horizon. And so, so exciting to look forward to that. Uh, but Snods, on the Blue Family Campaign, obviously you played your part in that massively, making calls, etc. What, what were your roles throughout the pandemic with fans? Yeah, because it's been a difficult time, we all know that. And just to keep the spirits of uh, all Evertonians up during uh, the pandemic, uh, we've met numerous hundreds of birthday requests cut telephone personal telephone calls um, videos personal messages uh, and to be fair the response you get a lot of them don't even believe you when you say oh it's snods here oh, from heaven they, they're absolutely made up uh, and I know Sharpie's done several Graham Stewart uh, a lot of the first team players but that just shows what kind of club we are um, we make we try and uh, give our supporters, especially the, the older ones who, who have found it more difficult during this uh, tough time, we've, I found it inspirational. Myself talking to them about when they used to come and watch Dixie Dean, some of them, and, and especially the, the Bob Latchfords and the Dave Thomases at the time, Let's and to hear 
I'm on about the Holy Trinity, Paul, Kendall, Harvey, and telling me about the Golden Vision and stuff like that. I was learning all the time off them as well, as they were going through their favourite players, and Davey Ixon, who was an absolute oh. gentleman. Uh, many of them said that he was the favourite player, and Brian Labone, and it was just great just to have chats with so many ladies, so many men about their experiences at Goodison Park and sporting this fantastic football club. Well, Snods, you're a true gent, and you know I know a lot of people that massively appreciated everything you did during the campaign. It's just a little part for us. They're, they're the main people. I, I, I don't think it's nothing at all to pick up a telephone or to do a visit, video message for them, uh, for them people that deserve it. Good man. Well, we've got to throw it back now to 2009 and a big win against the Clarets to get us in the mood for tonight. Well, this is Burnley's 50th visit to Goodison Park in the lead and the 100th league meeting between Everton and Burnley. Oh, clipped in from the right-hand side by Mears, but Fellaini gets it. Now Pienaar, good ball to Cahill. Back again to Pienaar. One for Yakubu to get on the end of here. Touch almost too strong, but he's done well. Osman, still a chance for Everton. Billy Ekdenov was free on the other side of the area. Leon Osman couldn't find... Baines, great-looking ball. Oh, Yakubu has hit the post. Fantastic ball in by Baines. Whipped in. Yakubu was onside. Turned the ball against the post. And Burnley clear. And James Vaughan is going to come on. Pienaar. Fellaini, Pienaar, Fellaini, chance, oh what a miss, might still be there, it is, it's James Vaughan, with virtually his second touch of the game, James Vaughan has come on as a substitute and broken the deadlock, neat play there between Pienaar and Fellaini, Yakubu couldn't get a touch, it was blocked by Calvarez, and James Vaughan scooped it over the line, Yakubu using his strength. Still Yakubu, Pinar in chance! That's wrapped it up! Thank you very much indeed! Stephen Pinar says God is great. Well, he's not bad either, Stephen Pinar. Lovely run by Pinar. Boot right through the ball. And joy from the Gladys Street end. So it's been a good festive season for Everton, it's the FA Cup next, but this one, as Everton go above Burnley in the league, has finished Everton 2, Burnley 0. Fantastic memories there from Goodison Park and a fantastic display. We were just saying about that team, how fantastic it was. Mikel, uh, sorry, Tim, Tim Cale, Stephen Pienaar, Yakubu, James Vaughan. Sarah, I just enjoyed watching that period. Uh, I thought we were exciting. I thought we had the best left-hand side duo in Pienaar and Baines in, in Premier League football. When they was on, they were sensational down that left-hand side. Big Marrow and Fellaini, uh, <laughs> Anfield, Tim Howard. Uh, who spent several years with us and little Aussie. You just could go on, they're endless. And the yak up front. The yak. A young Vaughan as well. So, uh, yeah, good times, good, exciting times to uh, to watch Everton in them times. Definitely, and that kind of desire that we saw from that team there, we want that kind of desire replicated tonight, don't we? We want that kind of team performance and fight shown tonight, and we'll need that against Burnley, won't yeah, we? Yeah, and one player from that time emphasised that, and a lad called Tim Scale. He, he, he was adored by the Evertonians. His celebrations at the corner flags for, for a reason. That's, that's what Evertonians love. They love players like that. And uh, just go out there and just roll your sleeves up and give them what they want for 90 minutes. They're, they're not asking to see superstars. They just want to see an Everton team that's going to be tough to beat that will do them proud and proud to wear that badge. That's what us Evertonians want. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Every time I look at the corner flag there now, I just think of like little 12 year old me sat up there watching, watching Tim Cahill punching the, uh, the corner flag. It's brilliant. But who do you see getting the, a goal, an important goal for Everton tonight? Then obviously there's a lot on Richarlison, isn't there? Yeah, that I think there is. I'd, I'd, I want to see Decore doing what he's been doing for three games, breaking into uh, the penalty box. Uh, obviously, Allen's going to be the one uh, sitting deep, uh, protecting the back three as such. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if I if I seen Seamus Coleman in at the back post, because yes. um, he'll be allowed to to get forward. Uh, but I think the main the main one's going to be Richarlison, Damari Gray, Decore. I think uh, I'm looking for one of them to at least get on the score sheet this evening. Definitely. Well, somebody else who'll be looking to get on that score sheet, and he has opened his Everton account already, is Andros Townsend. Let's get to know him a bit better. Hi, I'm Andros Townsend, and this is Get to Know. Um, my favourite place in the world is probably the Greek islands. Um, I'm half Cypriot, I try to get to Cyprus as much as possible but over the last few years I have enjoyed myself and the missus and the family going to the Greek islands, whether it be Santorini or I can't think of anyone else, Crete or one of those places and, and really just relaxing um, during the off-season. My childhood hero without a doubt is Ronaldo, the original Ronaldo R9, however you want to call him, El Phenomenon. He was just he was just incredible. Um, growing up and watching him for Brazil in the 1998 World Cup, 2002 World Cup, Real Madrid, Inter Milan, he was just literally, I loved watching him play and shame that injuries hampered his career, but for me, he's still one of the best players who have ever played the game. Standard for me, pre-match meal. I'm very um, superstitious. I like my routine, so it's always a, um, a pasta, chicken on the side, and a bit of broccoli um, without fail every game, home and away. And if I'm hungry, I may even after that I may even throw a bit of um, scrambled egg on, on on some white bread. The ability to score goals every game, isn't that what? Isn't that what everyone wants to do? Um, my hobbies outside of football... It's difficult now, I've got two kids, they occupy most of my time, but before kids I'd like to play a bit of tennis, still do in the off-season. A um, bit of cricket when the family come round in the back garden. Go-karting once upon a time. I really enjoy a, a wide, wide range of sports, to be honest, but um, as you guys know, when you have kids, you don't really have the time for any of that, unfortunately. Absolutely fantastic stuff there from Andros Townsend, and no doubt he'll be looking to make a big impact, impact sorry, again tonight. But I am delighted to be joined by Phil Haywood. Now, a lot of you have probably seen Phil. He has been running 10K every day for a whole year. Now, Phil, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and why. Uh, so, like you said, I've been running 10K a day for a whole year um, to help with mental health and suicide prevention um, in young people, basically, yeah. Well, we just saw, of course, on the 10th of September, that is World Suicide Prevention Day. And this, this has been a really, really tough period for a lot of, a lot of people, sorry, for the last 18 months or so. Um, just how much will this impact the money that you raise with Mind Charity? Yeah, so when I started off, it just sounded good, the name 10K a day for a year. I didn't realise how much of an impact it would make. Um, obviously, I'm a PE teacher, so seeing young children um, kind of going through it every day, and, and obviously in men mainly. And, young uh, boys not being able to speak uh, so every day just if I can do something to, to have an impact on making people do things coming out of the comfort zone then that's what I try to do really and over £17,000 I made so um, it'll, it'll go a lot to what I mind yeah. It's fantastic stuff and just for people watching as well if they want to donate Phil how can they do that? Yes yeah, so we've got a Just Giving page uh, it's phil uh, www.justgiving.com uh, forward slash phil Haywood3 
and all the link, all the information's on there. Good to donate. Well, we'll give a shout out for that as well, no doubt, on Twitter. Um, but make sure that you do your bit and donate. Now, just in terms of being back here as a fan, obviously you're a massive Evertonian. How great is it to be here today and, and under, at Goodison under the lights against Burnley? Excited? Oh, definitely. I've been waiting for it all day and where got me through today, really. Um, I've, I've missed this for you know a good 18 months, being back here, like you said. It's, it's one of the best places to be under the lights and hopefully we get them three points today. Do you think we will? Oh, definitely, yeah. No <laughs> question, yeah. Definitely. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, just quickly as well, was there any times during it where you felt like, you know, it was going to be tough to continue? And did the fans and the backing of people that supporters of this club help you through as well? Yeah, the first month I thought to myself, what am I doing? I had blisters the size of my palm on my hand. And mentally it was tough. It was um, it was all right, like September, mid-September. We came to October, rainy days. Um, dark nights, I just thought, what am I doing? Um, but like you said, people saying I couldn't do it and um, seeing Everton still on the TV, that, that kept me going and the fans on, online, that was great. Well, you're fantastic, Phil. Thank you're a real credit to this club and hopefully oh, we'll get the win for you tonight. Oh, you. Uh, but we have got a player interview for you now ahead of the game. Check it out. Michael, two wins and a draw. How positive do you, the team, feel about the start you've made? It's been a good start. Um, I think we deserved probably to, to win the game against Leeds as well. Um, we were disappointed not to win that one, but we had a brilliant win a few weeks ago at Brighton away. It was always going to be a tough place to go, and we defended really well and, and took our goals well. So, um, yeah, we're optimistic, and it's been a good start, but we have to continue that tonight. Michael, what would you say is different this season about your approach, about the style of play? I think we're looking to, to get the ball forward more, um, probably less passing out from the back. Um, more direct, but not, in, not just with long balls, just try to get the ball up the pitch and get the ball in, in dangerous areas and get more chances to score goals. Your second home game of the season, what difference does it make having Goodison Park full again? A huge difference. Uh, I think you can see the, the first game, the, the big boost they gave us in that second half and it was rocking, so hopefully we can do the same again today. How fantastic is that as Incredible. well? Incredible. Oh, what a guy, eh? Absolutely. And a real Absolutely. credit to this football club. No, with, without a doubt, yeah. It's, uh, it's brilliant. His achievement was fantastic. Fantastic. Well, hopefully we will get a result for him tonight under the lights as well. And just what a special thing, again, touching on that mental health uh, you know, subject, because it is so important, isn't it? And I think people have suffered an enormous amount over this past 18 months. And that collective feeling now of all being back together, how special is that? It is, there have been some really tough times, and I know at times I've found it difficult. Of course. It really is when, you, when you're stuck in the house and the, you, you really know where to go, there's nowhere open, and it, it's become very difficult. And, and I'm an easygoing, easygoing fella, to be quite honest, so I know how some uh, people have, been re, have found it really difficult. Uh, but I think, I think a lot of people have helped another, uh, uh, other people as well, people you don't even know. And, I noticed, I, I was going on walks every morning and noticing that, how many people were saying Aya that I didn't even know, morning, Aya, just to talk to somebody, just to get your feelings out there and uh, yeah, I think the community or I, I think people in general have been good to each other and I hope they can remain that way even though we have come out of Covid now, uh, we've still got some difficult times ahead of us but be nice to people, be nice to each other. That's what he doesn't take a lot, surely. Kindness costs nothing, does it? It doesn't cost anything to be nice to people, really doesn't. I agree, and certainly it helps as well when Everton are doing well, and someone who's contributed to us doing so well and starting the season so strongly is Damari Gray. Um, just what what can, more can we expect from this lad? Because look, he's got his stats there uh, already on screen. 81.6% pass completion, 80% tackle, tackle success, two goals three appearances those are some stats already aren't they for the young man do you know what sir if i'm being honest i don't think the boy can give us much more than what he's given us at the minute yeah. he's got great ability he's got great pace he's scoring goals what more do we want from him surely he ain't got much more than that because he's performing at the top of his ability at the minute top of his form so i'll be surprised if he can get any better than what he's showing us at the minute because his, his performances have been outstanding 
They have, and he's become a fan favourite, hasn't he, already? You've seen some of the chants bouncing around on Twitter, etc. Uh, he's already got a few chants been made for him in, in, on the away days, which is always a sign of a good player. Uh, Decore as well, we mentioned him today. He could be a real, real plus. Him and Alan, obviously protecting that that back. Well, back three. I think we're going to have three centre backs and two wing backs. Yeah, say. yeah. It's a good partnership that when you've got a deep sitting midfield player like Alan, it allows your other two uh, midfield players to get forward. You, with the beauty of knowing that somebody's sitting deep to protect our back three, if it's going to be well, it is going to be a back three. There's no doubt about that. But. Corey's got a license then to get forward. All right, he's got to he's got to be half turned and look at situations during the game. Can I go? Can I not go? But knowing that you've got a land there, probably six, seven times out of ten, you think, yeah, he sat there. I can, I can go on and help and help our strikers here and get forward. So yeah, good partnership for him in there. It is, and they've got some of the Corey stats there as well. Three appearances, one goal already, one assist. 41 forward passes. Now, that is the stat, isn't it? That's really, really going to please Abertonians. That's something in the past that maybe we've struggled with. Do you know modern football? At times, sir, it, it bores me at times. When I, when I see him getting at the back and passing back to the keeper, passing it square, passing it there, just for the sake of passing. And you can get a stat saying, oh, a certain player's touched, touched it 81 times and he's given the ball away once, but he's only passed it five yards, A to B. That bores me. The first thing you were told in football, when you pick the ball up, can you look forward? Look forward, that's your first thing in your mind. If it's not on, then you go square and you go back. So for him to, he's, he's passing now, he's looking forward, he's looking into strikers and then looking to be the third man to run on as well. So for me, stats don't mean anything when you just pass it five yards A to B. That, that's nothing to me. When you're making telling passes 40, 50 yards, when you're playing it into strikers, when you're doing that's what matters to me, and that's what he's been doing this season. He's been fantastic, and Snods, I liked what you said earlier as well about, you know, will we see more goals from him and that kind of encouragement to get forward and, and add more goals to Sally from the manager. I really think, you know, he's somebody that is going to score a good, you know, not up there necessarily with, with, with the strikers, obviously, mm. as you would expect, but that goal we saw against Southampton, yeah. I still watch that on repeat now and then on Twitter. The turn, the finish, special player, isn't well, it? Well, you, you know he's got that in his locker. And if I'm being honest, he's missed a couple of chances as well that he had an header that he should have scored. I can't remember who we were against. But he's getting into them positions to, to miss that chance, to have a strike on goal. And it's, uh, it's one of them that I think he's got it in his locker to get seven, eight goals, which is, which is decent for a midfield player. They always say, can you get in double figures as a midfield player? It's difficult these days to actually do that. The likes of Frank Lampard used to do that and Steven Gerrard because they used to get forward and score goals. It's difficult, but I certainly think he can get seven, eight goals this season for and that's a good return. Brilliant. Well, we'd all be absolutely delighted, no doubt, if he can pick up more goals throughout the season. But ahead of this one, here is Rafael Benitez. Rafa, no Dominic Calvert-Lewin tonight. Can you bring us up to speed as to why that is? To be fair, he, you know, he broke his toe and then he was training with problems and then he was playing uh, with pain and then he has an injury the other day and uh, that is the problem now. He has the quad, the quad and then we have to wait two or three weeks, maybe more, we will see. How much of a disruption has that been to your preparations for this one today? It's always a problem when you lose one of your best players, but uh, OK, we have to manage that and then hopefully the other players, they will do well and we were not missing him. Missing him. You brought Ben Godfrey in tonight. Does that involve a change of shape, perhaps three at the back? You will see uh, sooner rather than later, but uh, yeah, maybe it's an indication. Overall, Rafa, it's been a pleasing, positive start to the season for you. What do you feel has been the key? I think the team spirit is very good. To play the first game at home with the fans behind was uh, helpful. To win and the way that we won the first game gave us a lot of confidence and then little by little the team has been growing in confidence. So the atmosphere is, is very good in the training sessions, the relationship with the fans, uh, between players, the staff, so everything is, is fine. But, you know, you have to keep winning to keep that. Without being able to spend much money, you brought several new faces into the squad. How well equipped do you feel you are? Seven? Several. Ah, several. several. Okay, <laughs> you wish it was seven, I'm sure. Yeah, it could be. How well equipped do you feel you are for the season? 
I said in one of the press conferences that I'm really pleased with the players that we brought. So we were looking for these positions and uh, we were also looking for another backups in some position, but we couldn't we couldn't do that. But uh, really pleased because I think that uh, they saw on the pitch, some of them, that what they can do and, and hopefully the others uh, will do the same in the future. Everton Rafa struggled for form consistency at the back end of last season. How are you trying to change that? Always I say that every season is different. So this one is totally different. The atmosphere, the the um, desire, the commitment of the players on the pitch is something that the fans appreciate. So if we can keep that, I think that we can be consistent. But that, that is the Premier League. It's not easy. But at the moment, I am quite confident that the team will fight. Today is a big, st big test. So if we can... Uh, win this game, I think that uh, we have more confidence, more commitment and uh, hopefully the same desire. You know the qualities of this Burnley team pretty well by now. What do you have to do well to win this one tonight? We have to be strong on the ball. We have to be uh, play with confidence on the ball and also when we challenge and uh, the physical battles, we have to be strong. But especially we have to be clever when we have the ball. Well, you've heard it there from the manager. That is it from Everton Live. A big thank you, Ian Snowden, for joining me today. Anytime you know that, Sarah. Absolutely. Thank pleasure. you. We're going to win this one today. We certainly are. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much to all you Evertonians all over the world for joining us here at Goodison Park for Everton Live. Come on, you blues, and we'll see you next time.